All right, okay, guys. Um, this session is um graph three, and it is the last session on the graph. And in this session, we're going to look at um the negative x square graph. We're going to look at the gradient of a curve at a point on a curve. And we're going to learn how to use um, the root of a quadratic function to determine the function. So those are the three things that we're looking at in this session. <clears throat> All right, let's start off with the negative um, x square graph. All right, um, um, in the session before, we looked at the positive x square graph, where the graph looks something like that. Um, if the if the number in front of x squared is positive, um, you get a parabola that turns up like that. All right, and this par parabola would have a minimum turning point. But if the um, number in front of x squared is negative, you get a parabola that turns down like that. And this parabola would have a maximum turning point. All right. <laughs> so, um, this is an example of a negative x square graph. Um, please note the x axis and the y axis. Some of the properties. The properties um, for the negative x square graph are similar to the pop properties um, of the positive x square graph. In, in many cases, they are the same. Um, the first thing is that the number in front of x square is negative. So for you to get a graph um, that has this shape, the number in front of x squared or the coefficient of x squared um, in your quadratic function must be negative. Um, this is also true. C, which is this constant term at the end, is um, the y-intercept. And since the y-axis is the line um, x is equal to 0, um, 0, C are the coordinates of the y-intercept. 0 for the vertical and um, C for the horizontal. 0, C are the coordinates of the y-intercept. Um, here, the point up here is the maximum turning point. Um, and it has an x-coordinate, which is what? P and a y-coordinate, which is q. So 0, sorry, p, q are the coordinates of the maximum turning point. Every point on a graph has um, both x-coordinate and y-coordinate. The x-coordinate for the maximum turning point is p. The y-coordinate is q. Um, so um, p, q are the coordinates of the maximum turning point. All right, let's see what else. Um, we said that y is equal to q is the maximum value of um, y is equal to ax squared plus bx plus c. All right, so um, the maximum turning point is the highest point on the graph, and that is where you'll have the highest value of y. And the value of y at the highest point on the graph is y is equal to q. So y is equal to q is the um is the um the highest value of y. Um now x is equal to p is the value of x um where at the point on the graph where y is a maximum. X is equal to p is the value of x at the point on the graph where y is a maximum. What else? Um, x is equal to p is the equation of the axis of symmetry. All right, remember we said that the line of symmetry is a vertical line that passes through the turning point. So this would be the line of symmetry. All right, and the line of symmetry is a vertical line that passes through the turning point. All of your vertical lines are um, x lines. So x is equal to p is the line of symmetry. Um, remember that um, x is equal to alpha and x is equal to beta. The x-intercepts are the roots of the function. 
So here, the roots of um, the function are x is equal to alpha and x is equal to beta. Now, if you draw a graph of a function, the roots would be the x-intercepts. The roots would be the x-intercepts. All right. So we went through this um, in the last session, what, 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 um, what the roots of a quadratic function mean. You can review that on your own. All right. Um, so let's have a look at an example. Example one says, copy and complete the table below. All right, so we're given that and we're asked to copy and complete the table below. Um, everybody should remember that this table here is um, called a table of values. And it has corresponding values of X and Y from the same equation. Um, two of the values of Y are missing. And our first task is to determine what are the missing values of Y. To do that, you're going to use the equation. So um, we have y is equal to minus x squared plus 3x. The value of x when y is um, minus 1 is missing. So I'm going to say, sorry, the value of y when x is minus 1 is missing. So I'm going to say when x is equal to minus 1 y would be equal to minus minus one square plus three times minus one uh, this is really important so minus minus uh, minus x square is never ever ever positive minus x square is never positive all right um, because what is square is not the negative it's just x that is square all right, and whenever you square a number, you must, you're going to get a positive answer. A negative in front of it will always bring it back to a negative. So this is minus 1. And 3 times minus 1 is minus 3. So the value here is minus 1 minus 3 is minus 4. So when x is minus 1, y is minus 4. All right, let's determine the other missing value. All right, we have um, y is equal to minus x squared plus 3x. The value of y when x is 4 is missing. So I'm going to say when x is 4. All right, here should be minus 4. When x is 4, y would be equal to minus minus 4 square plus 3 times um, minus 4. Ugh. What am I doing? X is not minus 4. X is 4. So it's going to be y is equal to minus 4 square plus 3 times minus, sorry, 3 times 4. All right. So what must you remember? We must remember that uh, minus x squared can never, ever be positive. So this is going to work out to be minus 16 plus 12. Um, if the signs are different, you must subtract and keep the sign of a larger number. So the value of um, y here is what? Minus 4. So when x is 4, y is minus 4. So the value here is another minus 4. So we have completed the table. The next thing we're asked to do, we're asked to what? Using a scale of 2 centimeters to represent one unit on the x-axis and a scale of 1 centimeter to represent one unit on the y-axis, we're asked to draw the graph of y is equal to minus x squared plus 3x for values of x between minus 1 and 4. All right. Um, so, I mean, we have this graph to draw. Um, so the table is going to help us to position our axes. Um, for starters, I know I'm, because um, x goes out to 4, I know I'm and to the right and to the left, um, x only goes to minus 1. I know I'm going to need more space to the what? 
um, more space on the right hand side of the graph, which means that the y axis um, will be closer to the left margin. Um, y goes as high as what? 2. Um, and as low as minus four. So again, I know I would be needing more space um, at the bottom half of the graph, at the bottom part of the graph where where y is negative. So the scale is also important. So let's get some, um, let us put in our axes. All right, um, I would put my, I would put my um, x axis here because um, to the left, I only need two centimeters. Um, so that I can, um, I only need two centimeters. So, all right, let's see if I can bring over this a little. All right, all right, so this is my y-axis. All right, and as I said to the left, I only need two centimeters because to the left, x only goes to minus one. All right, so I need this, all this, I need um, this um, mass, I need a lot more space to the right because y, because x goes to positive four. All right, um, my, Y axis, my X axis, I'd probably put it around here. And I know that it will work. So let's put it about here. All right. So my x-axis, I'm going to put about there. All right, and why um, I'm putting the x-axis higher up because based on my based on my information from a table of values, I need more space at the bottom half of the graph. Um, so this will get sort of like cause my graph to be nicely spaced on the graph sheet as opposed to be polarized to one section on the paper. All right, let's label the axes. Um, the scale tells us how to label the axis. And on, the, and on the x axis, we're told the scale is two centimeters to one unit. So that's every centimeter, one centimeter, two centimeter, the number goes up by one. One centimeter, two centimeter, this is two. One centimeter, two centimeter, this is three. One centimeter, two centimeter, this is four. One centimeter, two centimeter, this is five. To the left, x only goes to minus one. All right, on the y-axis, the scale is, um, on the y-axis, the scale is one centimeter to one unit. That means every centimeter on the y-axis, the number goes up by one. All right, down here, we have minus one, minus two, minus three, minus four, minus five, minus six, minus seven, minus eight, etc. All right, so let's plot our points. Our points are minus one, minus four, minus one vertical, minus four horizontal, that will put my point here, minus one vertical, minus four horizontal. All right, that will put my point there. All right, so the X coordinate is the vertical coordinate. And the y coordinate is the horizontal coordinate. All right. Um, the next point is zero zero, which is the origin. Then we have what one two and two two. One two and two two. All right. Then I'm guessing the next one is going to be three zero. All right, and the last one is going to be four, negative four. So that will put my point around here. All right. 
So I have all points necessary to draw my graph. Um, remember that the parabola is a smooth curve. So you want to try and get your, your graph as neat as possible. Um, it must look like nice, you know, I mean, nice curve. I mean, nice smooth curves, not not lumpy lumpy curves or, you know, you just need nice smooth curves. And, and to achieve this, you need to what, pass through as many of the points as possible with every stroke of your pencil. All right. So let me try here. All right. So that's one half of the graph. Let's do the next half of the graph. All right, you might have to make a few tries. So be very certain when you move that you know exactly what you're doing. All right, so um, I'm going to work with this. So this is my graph, and this is the graph of y is equal to minus x squared plus 3x. All right, this graph is a negative x squared graph. And that simply means that the number in front of x squared is negative. Remember, if the graph turns up like this, this is a positive x squared graph. And if the graph turns down like this, this is a negative x squared graph. All right, so these are things that we must remember. Um, positive gives you a smile. Negative gives you a frown. All right. Oops. All right, I undo, but I went a little bit too far. All right, so it's back there again. All right, um, so there's that's example one. That's it. There's nothing more to example one. It's just to practice drawing the graph. So ensure that you practice that. Um, let's have a good example two. It says the diagram above is the graph of um, y is equal to minus x squared plus 2x plus 3. So again, this is a negative x squared graph. We are asked to determine the coordinates of the maximum point. We are asked to determine the, um, the maximum value of y. Sorry, the maximum value of minus x squared plus 2x plus 3, which is another way of saying the maximum value of y on the graph. Um, we are asked to determine the value of x, which y is a maximum. Um, we are asked to determine the equation of the line of symmetry or the axis of symmetry. And we're asked to determine the roots of the function. All right, so let's have a go at it. All right, so um, this is the highest point on the graph right here. So that would be our maximum turning point. The vertical coordinate, which is the x coordinate, is 1. And the horizontal coordinate, um, which is the y coordinate, is 4. So this, so 1, 4, are the coordinates of the maximum turning point. 1, 4 are the coordinates of the maximum turning point. All right. Um, next, we're asked for the maximum value of y. Well, the maximum value of y, you'll obtain the maximum value of y on the graph at the highest point of the graph. The highest point of the graph is up here. where y is 4. The highest point of the graph is at the top there, where y is 4. All right. All right. So um, the maximum value of y is y is equal to 4. Again, y is a maximum at the highest point on the graph, where y is equal to 4. Um, next, we ask for the value of x um, for which y is a maximum. So y is a maximum at the maximum turning point. And every point on the graph of an x-coordinate and a y-coordinate. The y-coordinate is 4. 
And if you move down from that point until you get to the x axis, you get the x coordinate, which is 1. So x is equal to 1 is the value of x for which um, y is a maximum. Next, we're asked for the um, axis of symmetry. The axis of symmetry is a vertical line that passes through the turning point. So here, this would be the axis of symmetry. It's a vertical line that passes through 1 on the x-axis. So this is the line x is equal to 1. Now, x is equal to 1 is the line or the axis of symmetry. All right. So this is x is equal to 1. Um, next, we need to determine the roots. Um, remember, if you have a graph of a function, the roots of the function would be the x-intercepts. The x-intercept is where the graph cuts the x-axis. So the roots would be x is equal to minus 1 and x is equal to 3 are the roots of the um, function minus x squared plus 2x plus 3. All right, let's go on a little further. All right, here's a question. Um, yeah, for this question, the diagram has already been drawn. So we'll sort of go um, between this question page and the diagram in order to answer the questions. It says the diagram below shows the graph of the function f of x is equal to x squared minus 2x minus 3. For values of x, um, between um, A and B. For values of x between A and B. Um, the tangent to the, to the graph at um, 2 minus 3 is also drawn. Use the graph to determine A, the value of A and B. All right. Um, now, A and B, um, x is less than or equal to B and x is greater than or equal to a are the domain values um, for which this graph was what drawn. Well, the domain values are the x values over which this graph was what drawn. So if we go to the diagram, we can see that the graph started here where x is minus 2, and the graph ended here where x is what? 4. So x is equal to so x so the values of x for which over which this graph is drawn is between x is equal to minus two and x is equal to four. So it says the value of a and b. So um, a would be minus two and b would be four. All right, um, b. B is asking us for um, the value of x for which um, x squared minus 2x minus 3 is equal to 0. All right, so we have x squared minus 2x minus 3 is equal to 0. So in other words, we are being asked to solve, um, to solve an equation. Um, we must draw the graph of the left-hand side and the graph of the right hand side. So this is y is equal to x squared minus 2x minus 3. Over here, we have y is equal to 0. This, both of these graphs have already been drawn. All right, so the parabola is actually y is equal to x squared minus 2x minus 3. That's a parabola. Alright, and the x-axis is the line y is equal to 0. Remember, to use graph to solve an equation, quadratic equation, or to use graph to solve any equation, you have to draw the graph of the left-hand side of the equation and the graph of the right-hand side of the equation. The solution would be the value, 
the solution would be the value of x where the two graphs intersect. Now, the parabola and the line y equals 0 intersects here and here, where x is minus 1 and x is equal to um, 3. So the solution, the solution of um, x squared minus 2x minus 3 is equal to 0, or x is equal to minus 1, and x is equal to 3. See, we're to determine the coordinates of the minimum turning point. Um, remember, the minimum turning point is the lowest point on the graph, which is here, where x is 1 and y is minus 4. All right. So um, this would be C minus 4, min sorry, 1, all is the x coordinate first. Minus 4 is the min. TP and min TP stands for minimum turning point. All right, um, now we're at what? D. We're asked for the whole number of values of x, the whole number of values of x, for which x squared minus 2x minus 3 is less than 1. All right, so in essence, we want the values of x for which f of x, for which um, f of x, is less than 1 or for which y is less than 1 all right so let's this is the line y is equal to 1 this is the line y y is equal to 1 all right, it's obvious that part of the graph is above this line and part of the graph is below this line. All right, so the values of x used to draw this graph are between minus 2 and positive 4. What we want to know are the values of x for which, um, for which f of x on this graph, for which y on this graph is less than 1. All right. So let us identify the value of x here, the value of x here. At those values of x, um, f of x is equal to 1. For those values of x, f of x is equal to 1. All right, so let's try and identify. This is 1, and I would say that this is, come down here. This looks to me like 1.2. So this is 1.2 minus 1.2. Let's go to the other side. And here, this would be what? 3.2. All right. Let's bring back, bring bring um a graph back down all right so between <coughs> so um at x is equal to minus 1.2 and um x is equal to 3.2 um f of x or y is equal to one all right <coughs> um <coughs> so so, and we're talking about where the graph is what? The values of x, which f of x is less than 1. All right. Um, so, for all the values of x out here, 
all the values of x out here, um, we can see that um, f of x is what? Greater than 1. For these values of x, f of x is greater than 1. But for these values of x in between here, f of x is less than 1. So the answer to that question is um, solution x x is less than or equal less than 3.2 but greater than minus 1.2 for those values of x any value of x within that range f of x is less than f of x which is x squared minus 2x minus 3 would be less than 1 and last but not least, we need to look at um, E. We need to look at E. All right, let's get back to E. That's what we do here. Ah. <clears throat> now E is asking us for the gradient of f of x, which is x squared minus 2x minus 3 at x is equal to 2. We're asked for the gradient of the curve when x is equal to 2. Here's a little note. The gradient of a point on a curve um, is equal to the gradient of the tangent to the curve at the same point. I'll say that again. The gradient of a point on a curve is equal to the gradient of the tangent to the curve at the same point. What is a tangent to a curve? A tangent to a curve is a straight line that touches the curve at a single point. So in other words, um, if I want to find the gradient of a point on a curve, I need to find the gradient of the tangent to the curve at that point. Why? Because the gradient of the tangent to the curve is equal to the is equal to the gradient of the curve at the same point. All right. Um, so here, this is the tangent. This is the tangent. All right, let's remove that from there. That straight line here, the straight line here that touches the curve at a single point, which is here, this is the tangent. And the tangent is touching the curve at the point um, 2 minus 3. This point is 2 minus 3. All right. <clears throat> and um, we're asked to find the gradient of the curve at that point. To find the gradient of the curve, what I'm going to do is I'm going to find the gradient of the tangent. So to find the gradient of a straight line, I need to at least identify two points on the straight line. At right, that point there is at the top of the tangent, where x is 4 and y is 1. So the two points I have are 2 minus 3 and 4, 1. I'm going to call this point x1, y1, and call this x2, y2. All right, so I'm finding the gradient of a straight line. We should all remember the formula from coordinate geometry. m is equal to y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. This would be... Um, 1 minus minus 3 over um, x2, which is 4, minus x1, which is 2. 1 minus minus 3 is 4. 4 minus 2 is 2. So the gradient is equal to, the gradient, which is m, is equal to 2. So the gradient of the curve at um, the gradient of the curve at the point two minus three, which is equal to the gradient of the tangent, is equal to two. All right. So I can probably write that answer in for e. E. And e is saying um, the gradient of f of x. Um, so the gradient. of f of x 
um, when x is equal to 2, that gradient m is equal to, is also equal to 2. Alright, let's see what else needs to be done. Alright, all right, so the absolute last thing in this topic, um, it's important. Um, we have um, we have seen examiners have asked questions about this in the past. It's it's a very it's a very useful knowledge to have, um, and that is how do we determine um, how do we use the roots of a quadratic function to determine the function? Um, it says the diagram is so. Let's have a look at example four. Example four says the diagram is a sketch um, is a sketch of the graph y is equal to x squared plus y is equal to x squared plus um, ax plus b, and we're asked to determine the value, determine the value of a, and it says y here, but really what it should say is determine the value of a and b. We need to determine the value of a and b. All right, let's turn the page and see how we're going to do it. All right. So the roots here are x is equal to what? 1 and x is equal to 3. All right. And what we're learning is how to use the roots, um, how to use the roots of a function to determine the function. All right. So now, so x is equal to 1 and x is equal to what? 3 are roots. So I'm going to put, therefore, x minus 1 is equal to 0, and x minus 3 is equal to 0. Now, if x is equal to 1 is a root, and x is equal to 3 is a root, x x minus 1 and x minus 3 are factors. And um, why the function would be equal to x minus 1 multiplied by x minus 3. So, um, I want to let you really don't have to understand it fully, but essentially what this is saying is that if you have a root, um, the root is x is equal to 1, you bring over that 1 over to the side where the x is, positive comes over and becomes negative, so x minus 1 will be equal to 0, and x minus 3 is also equal to 0, that x minus 1 and x minus 3 are the factors of, are factors of the function. Um, in in a in a similar way like um how three and two are factors of six and when you multiply three and two you get what six now x minus one and x minus three are factors of the function so if you multiply the two of them you're going to get the function so that's sort of one way of looking at it so let's multiply we know to multiply this already binomial expansion x times x is x squared x times minus three Minus 3 is minus 3x. Um, minus 1 times x is minus x. A negative times a negative is a positive. So minus 1 times minus 3 is positive 3. So y would be equal to that, which is equal to x squared minus 4x plus 3. So the function, which is y is equal to x squared minus 4x plus 3 is equal to x squared plus ax plus b. All right, now, um, so now we have what? Um, two functions which are equal. So let's compare coefficients. Um, over the right hand side, we have a, which is the coefficient, which is the coefficient of um, x. 
would be equal to minus 4, which is the coefficient of x on the left-hand side. So a is minus 4. And b, which is the constant on the right, is equal to 3, which is the constant on the left. All right. So, all right. So what did I do? <clears throat> what I did here is I use the roots of a function to determine to determine the function, and by determining the function, I can then equate what coefficients, um, because the function, which is y is equal to x squared plus a x plus b, is equal to the function x squared minus 4x plus 3. So if these two functions are equal, and um, you have x squared here and x squared here, and the two things are equal, it means that whatever is in front of x over here is equal to whatever is in front of x over here. And whatever is constant over the right is also equal to whatever is the constant over the left. All right, so we found the answer by equating coefficients. All right, so um, <clears throat> if x is equal to 1 is our root, and x is equal to 3 is our root, um, x minus 1 and x minus 3 are factors. And if you multiply the two factors of the quadratic function, you would get the quadratic function. All right. Um, your homework on this topic is exercise um, 29, page 100 and 94 in your workbook.